All right, so last time we uh, discussed the behavior of uh, inductors and capacitors and uh, AC circuit. So the behavior is very similar to um, resistors, but they will have an equivalent resistance we call reactance, right? And then they also uh, is going to change the phase of the current. The inductors are going to make the current always uh, behind the uh, Voltage, and then the uh, capacitor makes capacitors make the uh, uh, current ahead, 90 degrees ahead of the voltage, and then we combine all these uh, three elements together in a AC circuit. You connect them in series to a uh, AC circuit. The AC circuit still provides this uh, voltage uh, as a function of time, and then you can still solve. Uh, for the uh, current <coughs> using uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule. Right. We didn't solve that, we're just going to go ahead and use the conclusion. The, the uh, current is still a cosine function, uh, the same format, uh, I max times cosine function, but I max is going to be calculated this way, so there's a lot of definitions here, right? a lot of definitions. And then once you have the current, in this circuit, there's only one current because uh, they are in series. Right? But they have different voltages, right? One of them, like each of them, only gets part of the voltage from the uh, source, okay? And how do we figure out the voltage? That's when you use the theories we learned before for one resistor, inductor, and capacitor, okay? That's something you need to figure out, uh, as I said, right? If you understand the theory, you know how to figure it out. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Resistor, you just do this, right? You multiply the I and the R. That's the function of I, multiply them together. Now this uh, inductor, the maximum value is still gonna be I max times XL. Look at this, right? XL is pretty much like R. XC is pretty much like R, okay? So that's how you figure out the maximum value. Now the function is still gonna be a cosine function then you're going to use the relation between the current and voltage. One is always ahead, one is ahead, then the other one is behind, right? You use the theory we learned for uh, inductors and capacitors. You can figure out the cosine function. It's going to be the cosine function of this uh, uh, current plus or minus one half pi, okay? Now let's practice this theory. So let's uh, take a look. Uh, the, the, the problem in lecture 18, uh, slide 12. A series, okay, we have R, L, C, all these three numbers connected to an AC source with a frequency 60 hertz, uh, Vmax 150. We want to find the current at the T equals 4 milliseconds. Okay, in order to find that, uh, we're just going to use the current equation, the function for the current. The function for the current is this. So all you need to do is just find I max, okay, which is going to take you some time. You see, I max equals this divided by this. We know V max, but what about Z? Z is defined as this. Then in order to find Z, you need XL and XC. What is the definition of XL and XC? XL is defined as a this, XC is defined as this, right? So, and then that's going to be the number I max defined. Then you also need tangent of the triangle plug in here, right? So you also do some algebra to find this. And then at the end, uh, what is the angular frequency? Well, you, the problem tells you frequency, right? So omega is going to be equal to 2 pi f. That's a, relation between the omega and f, right? And then once you have everything ready, put the time in, four milliseconds, okay? Four milliseconds. At the end, you will find the time, or find the current and the time. It's gonna take you some time to finish all the algebra, pause the video, do the algebra, okay? It may take you like more than 10 minutes, I believe, okay? <clears throat> then you can compare your answers with mine. All right, so uh, now I'm gonna 
show you all the answers I got. You have to do every step very carefully, right? First of all, omega, this is going to be equal, because this is going to be 2 pi times 60, right? Okay, you can plug in this pi in and find a number, right? But that's the omega. Then you need to find XL and XC, right? So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to rate this. You find all these numbers. You have the L and C from the problem. Convert them to SI unit. L, L you don't need to convert, but C you need to convert that to. So the XL I, I found is. 471.2 ohms, right? XL and XC, they're just like resistant. They should be in ohms. XC, I found, seven five seven point nine ohms, okay? <clears throat> now you can put everything together, find Z. Because Z is going to be equal to this, This is the definition of Z. So this is the equivalent of these three guys, the equivalent of resistance of the three guys combined. This number I found is this. Did you find this number right? And then, okay, once you have Z, you can find I max, right? I max is gonna be V max over Z. Right, see, that Z is pretty much like the equivalent resistance of the three, three guys combined. This I found is 0.293 amps. Okay, uh, but you still need this phi angle to plug in, right? The phi angle is this definition. <clears throat> you already have these three numbers, XL and XC and R from the problem. This guy I found is... Uh, Radiance, right? Everything is in radians in this part, okay? <clears throat> then you can plug the time in, right? What is the time? Time is uh, four minute seconds, four minute seconds, okay? Then the current at four minute seconds, plug all the numbers into this equation, that's the current equation you will get very carefully okay did you get this right answer it's also ne of negative I'm sorry negative it is because the current changes direction all the time all right so that's the current so you see the RLC circuit you just have a lot of definition you're going to do a lot of algebra to get the right answer Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now let's find the voltage. Find the voltage on the resistor. Okay. Find the voltage in the on, on the resistor. Let's see. As I said, the resistor is easy, right? All you need to do, I'm just gonna use Ohm's law. Right? I don't even need the function. What is the current uh, uh, through the resistor? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a different time. T equals three milliseconds. Okay, so you're gonna <coughs> still use the function. So you're gonna do I max cosine omega T minus phi. This whole thing times R, right? Or if you want to put them together, it's gonna be I max R cosine omega T minus phi. But in this part, the question changes time, okay? Changes time, not four sec milliseconds anymore, three. Three, okay? So you're gonna plug in the time. Three milliseconds, put all these numbers in, right? The phi angle is negative 0.59. This number I found, negative 18.6 volts. Okay, <clears throat> this is the voltage on the resistor at t equals 3 milliseconds, a different time, not 4. 
Now let's take a look at the next part. Find the voltage on the inductor. As I said, you're gonna figure out the uh, the, the voltage on the inductor. How do you figure it out? Voltage is something you need to figure. Use the theory. Use this theory. The voltage on the inductor must be. Let's figure it out one more time. Uh, some maximum value times the cosine function. The uh, maximum value, take a look at this, right? Because uh, inductors capacity, they behave like resistors, okay? This is I max times R. This must be I max times XL. Okay? This is how fine I find the maximum value for the voltage. Now, cosine function, okay? It will have this omega T minus phi in there. Okay, from the current, then you're gonna add or subtract one half pi. How, uh, how do I figure that out? Take a look at this theory. This theory is gonna be given, right? This theory is when it's only connected to this. Okay, this is only one inductor connected to a voltage source. When this guy is connected to it, it's, some, it's gonna make the current always 90 degrees behind the voltage. Now, if I have a current, the voltage, it's going to be 90 degrees ahead of this guy. So I'm going to add one half pi. Okay, now you can uh, put numbers in, right? So three milliseconds, three, still three milliseconds. And then IMAX, uh, we already have it here. IMAX, uh, <coughs> XL, we found it. Uh, phi, we have it. Okay, put all the numbers in. So, data VL at three milliseconds. This number I found as uh, negative one. Okay. So this is the voltage on this uh, inductor. Now let's do the capacitor. Let's figure out this voltage again. Something times the cosine function. This is going to be the maximum value because times cosine function, right? How do I find the maximum value? Well, it's got to be Ohm's law I max times the resistance, but this guy has an XC, right? The XC is pretty much the resistance, okay? Now, cosine is going to still have the f function from the current. Now, do I subtract all uh, uh, F? Well, once you figure this out, because the capacity is always an uh, object to that, right? Or, again, take a look at theory. A capacitor is always going to make the voltage of the current 90 degrees ahead of the voltage. So the voltage is always going to be 90 degrees behind the current. This is the current. I'm going to subtract one half pi from it. Okay? So at the end, data we see at three milliseconds, the number I found. So that's the next bar, right? Uh, 15, slide 15. 219.6 volts. Okay? That's how I figure out the voltage. That's how I figure out the voltage. Now, uh, let's do this. So I want you to add, so let's, let's add these three voltages together because these three voltages, they're the voltage on each element at the same time, three milliseconds, right? Three milliseconds. This is the re, uh, voltage on the resistor. This is the voltage on the capacitor, or uh, inductor, that's capacitor. Let's add them together. No, don't need this. So if I do this, plus data VL plus data VC, there's three numbers I just found. Add them together. Uh, this is not on the slide. I just want you to do that. If you add them together, what is the number you got? Add these three voltage where we found at three many seconds. You will find 64.5 volts. So that's the total voltage, right? Total voltage on these three guys, you add them together. The problem, what is the total voltage from the, from the source? The problem says, delta V max 
is going to be 150 volts. Okay. This is the total from the from the source, but they're not equal, right? Because this total voltage is going to be divided into this guy, this guy, this guy. Each of them is going to get part of it, but the sum should be equal to the total. But these two numbers are not equal. We just found the total voltage on these three guys is 64.5, but the Vmax on the source from the source 150. This is only Vmax, right? The total voltage from the source is also a function, it's changing. I have to find the voltage at three milliseconds so I can compare that with this number, right? So that's what we want to do on slide 16. Use that function, find the data V at three milliseconds. So that means I'm just going to use this function, right? You see that 150 is only the max, and then you still need to do cosine omega t. And that's it. Okay? Now put all the numbers in. Omega is still this. Time t is uh, 3 milliseconds. This number you find will be, what is this number you find? Is that a surprise? Is it going to be a surprise? No. Okay? 33.9. Very close. Okay? The difference is just a rounding difference, rounding error. Okay? So this is a check mark. They should be equal. This is a voltage from the source at three minutes seconds, right? At three minutes seconds, it's somewhere in this uh, graph. It's not at the top, right? Only at the top you can say, oh, it, the voltage is 150 from the source. But now it, it's not, right? So it's providing this, and then the total from the uh, from these three elements, it's also equal to that, okay? That's uh, consistent. Everything is consistent in physics. Everything, if you think it through, okay, using math, okay, you have to do math. All right. So this is what we. Uh, this is a RFC circuit. And I said, why do we want to connect them? It's not because we want my things hard. Especially for a college student who take physics. No, it's because it's useful in life, in real life. Why is it useful? It can become a resonance circuit. So let's take a look at slide 17. Now I'm going to explain that why this can be used as a resonance circuit. Now think about this. Uh, this is a circuit. And then this is how I calculate all the current. Okay, the current and everything. Now uh, take a look at the expression for Imax. Right? So this Imax is going to determine the, the maximum value of the current as. Right? If you connect these three guys, okay, I, I still give the same RLC, but if I change this source, right, so the source uh, in this problem is like 150 volts, the frequency is this, I connect it to a different one, do all the numbers change? Yes, because XL is going to change, because XL depends on the uh, omega, and omega is from the uh, source. XC is going to change. So every time you, even if you have three guys together the same, you connect them to a different source. Even if they, the source have the, has the same maximum voltage, like always 150, I'm just going to change the frequency. You will still get different values because XL and XC is going to change. If they change, everything is going to change, right? So that means I can use this to actually pick some signal at a specific uh, frequency. Uh, what do I mean by that? Now take a look at this uh, Z, okay? The Z is defined as R squared plus this and this, okay? And then square root. Now if I connect this to, a I, I replace this source with a different voltage, a different frequency, how does this Z change? Well, R, does the R change at all? No. Resistance uh, it doesn't depend on the frequency, right? It doesn't depend on, it doesn't change. But this XL and XC, they can change. But it doesn't matter how they change. Uh, you take the difference, you square that, you always get a number here. If I ask you, uh, then what would be the minimum value of Z possible? What is the minimum possible value for Z? That's going to be when these two guys are equal exactly, 
right? Because that's the minimal value you can get uh, for from a square, right? So it doesn't matter which one is larger, which one is smaller. If you subtract them, you always get a number. You square that, you will get something. The minimum value of z, it's gonna just be r when this guy, these two guys are equal. And then if the z reaches the minimum, the i max is gonna reach its max. Oh, it's a, it's a little bit fun, uh, confusing. This i max value also has a range, but this i max value is gonna reach its own max. Okay, so I max max, if you like, you call it. But anyway, my point is this. If I want to make the current in this circuit really large, I would want to make these two guys equal so that the Z, which is the minimum, which is the equivalent resistance of the circuit to be minimum, right? This is definitely the minimum it can get, right? Because it's R squared plus something squared. So that's when the current Reach the maximum in this circuit. That's going to be the maximum current possible you can get, and with these three guys, with these three guys, right? And how do I make sure these two guys equal? Well, I use the definition. So that means you need to make sure omega L equals one over omega C. L and C again, they are just the probability of these three guys, right? I still give you, give you the three guys. I don't change these three guys, but I can change the source, right? So that means you have to pick a very specific source that satisfies this. Uh, what is the uh, requirement for the source? The source, the omega from the source, right? You rearrange this equation, you will find an expression for omega, right? The expression for omega is gonna be this. Right? You rearrange this equation, you will get that try there. Okay? So that means if they are connected to a source, okay, with the angular frequency, which is gonna be exactly this number. And this number is determined by these two guys, L and C, right? Has nothing to do with R. I give you these three elements. You connect them to different source, okay? Uh, you can pick any source you like. But if you pick a source which has an angular frequency with this number exactly equal to the square root of this, then you will see a large current through these three guys when you connect it to the three guys to that uh, source. Why? Well, because when I connect them to a frequency which equals this, then this is gonna be equal, then this is gonna be zero, so the z is gonna reach the minimum. So that's the minimum R I can get, the minimum Z I can get. So in that case, the current in this circuit is gonna reach maximum. So it's gonna be like this. Okay, it's oscillating, but it's a very big uh, amplitude, right? If you connect it to a very good frequency, which equals that. So that's called a resonance angular frequency. So we see, we usually put a naught here, zero here, omega naught equals one over L square root of LC, okay? So that's what resonance means. That means the circuit is in resonance with the source. So that's why it has a very large magnitude, the current, right? Resonance, that's what resonance means, okay? Uh, what's the use of this? Okay, take a look at the uh, graph on uh, slide 18. There, there's a plot of this uh, of this uh, current, the I max, versus the frequency of the source. Okay, you can see that as a resonance, the I, the magnitude of I is going to be really large compared to the magnitude, the amplitude of the current. At different, you pick another source, right? So it's gonna be a really big peak. So that means if you connect it to a good frequency, which is equal to this, you get a current like this. But if you connect it to a different frequency, which is not equal to this, a random frequency that's not equal to this, uh, you will just oscillate like this. Okay, so compare this to that. So it's gonna get a very strong signal from that source and a very weak signal from that. This can be used as the filter, right? When there are many, many signals coming in, many, many sources, right, coming in, and I only want to pick one source, one signal, I can use this. All I need to do is just 
fine tune these two numbers because I can always fine tune these two numbers. I can always pick a L and a C and then make sure this number say equals uh, 5,000K hertz. Okay? If I make this uh, number 5,000K hertz, that means I, it will pick the uh, source, the signal at 5,000K uh, hertz, right? All the other signals, they are also coming in but it's not going to really affect. It's going to become a little bit, it's, it's going to be a little bit noise, but the 5000K Hertz signal is going to dominate, right? Okay? So this is widely used in radio, television, and everything, right? So when you are tuning, when you're turning the car radio knob, you're actually changing its resonant frequency. So you're actually tuning this number to the uh, frequency of a specific station. If you tune this number to 5,000 K Hertz, it's just going to receive a very large, very strong signal from the 5,000 K Hertz station. The signal from other stations, they're going to be suppressed. Look at the graph. So the 5,000 is going to be like this. But other stations, they're going to still, you're going to still receive that as a background noise, but it's going to be very weak. Okay? So that's why this can be used as a, a filter circuit. Okay, and when you uh, tune, it, when you are turning the knob in your car radio, okay, you are actually changing a capacitor there. So there is a there is a variable uh, capacitor inside this uh, uh, the car radio. You don't see that. So the L in that uh, radio it doesn't change, but the C is variable. So you can always change that so that you can change the. A, a resonance frequency of your circuit and then when you change the resonance frequency it's always going to pick the frequency of the corresponding station because all these stations remember all these stations they are sending out signals at the same time uh, probably with the same strength right how do you pick there are like a lot all these ENM waves right then how do you pick a station you want to listen to you're going to use a <coughs> field circuit Pretty much like this, okay? So that's why it's useful. This RLC circuit is very useful in real life. That's why we want to study that, okay? Now again, it's always easier to understand the theory in the real problem with numbers. That's what we're gonna do now, okay? Now let's take a look at the question on uh, slide 19. An AM radio antenna, okay? Picks up a thousand K hertz signal with a peak voltage of 5 uh, mini volts okay so it wants to pick that signal okay again at this time all stations are sending out signals but they have assigned uh, frequency right this station your frequency must be this that station you only get that frequency you can send all your signals at the same time but I can use a filter circuit to pick the station I want to listen to so the tuning circuit consists of six uh, microhammer in inductor, okay? And the variable capacitor, yeah, that's what I just said, right? You, you change, you actually change the C, okay? The inductor core has a resistance and the resistance of the rest, are, okay? So it's pretty much telling you it's an RLC circuit. This guy, 0.25, uh, this L, 60 micro Henry this guy can vary this guy has a range right this guy has a range like from A to B by changing this guy you can change the uh, resonance frequency of this uh, circuit so you can pick different stations for you okay to what value should capacitor be tuned to listen to this radio station okay what does that mean that means you want to listen to the station of a frequency 1000 K Hertz so you want to listen to it how do you listen to it what you well I mean when you tune the uh, radio you don't know what you're doing you just like try until you hear that very clearly but actually what you're doing is that you're gonna make change the C to make this value in this uh, uh, in this radio exactly matches this station you listen to you listen to you want to listen to 1000 K Hertz uh, station so that means you want to listen to the station with 
1000 kHz. You want to make sure the resonance frequency of the circuit is going to be equal to that frequency. But this is angular frequency, so this guy you can multiply by 2, right? Because omega always equals 2 pi times m. 1000k. Okay, how do you listen to that uh, station? You're gonna tune your circuit to make sure the resonance frequency of your circuit, angular frequency, is gonna be equal to that. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. This is gonna be equal to L1 over square root of LC, right? The L is a constant, you can only change the C. So you're gonna change the C, you can try, 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 and until you hear the station very clear, that means you have already changed this whole value to be exactly this. That's how you can listen to that station, okay? You see that once you understand the problem, understand the theory, the long story, that's how you set it up, right? This is the resonance angular frequency you want, how, uh, and this must be equal to this equation. Okay, so you just rearrange that equation, you can find the uh, uh, C, right? Okay, so do the algebra. All right, first of all, I'm going to rearrange that equation, right? Omega 0 equals 1 over this. So I don't like square root. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of that. 1 over LC. I don't like denominators. I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominators. Now how do I find a C required? Right? And then omega 0 is this. You want to listen to this station with a thousand kHz. That's the angular frequency you, need, you want to match. That's how you match them, okay? You put all these numbers in, you will get B. Did you get the right answer? All right, so this is this part. Now, let's take a look at the second part. What is the peak current through the circuit at resonance? Oh, so that means I want to find I max. When I, so I've already tuned my circuit to this. I want to find my, uh, the IMAX. How do I find IMAX? This is still RLC circuit. I'm just going to use the RLC circuit C theory. Just do VMAX divided by Z. Okay? And then VMAX is this, right? It says that with a peak voltage of 5 millivolts, so VMAX is this. Okay, so uh, and then the all you need is Z, right? How do you find a Z? Z has a definition. Just use the definition. Okay, so uh, and then So you should plug all the omega, L, and C to find these two guys, right? Omega is this, you tune your circuit to this uh, frequency, and then you find omega, X, L, X, C, but this is at resonance, right? You already tune your circuit to be at resonance with the station. That means these two numbers must be equal, right? That's what resonance means, right? When it's at resonance, these two numbers are equal, this is zero, so Z has reached the minimum. Right, so it's just going to be equal to R. Okay, that's what resonance means. That's how you listen to that station. Okay, you don't need it to calculate because this is already at resonance. So what is Z uh, R in the problem? Okay, if Z is there, I max you can just find it. V max over Z. That's going to be one two. Okay, so that's the signal you receive from this station. Okay, you would say, well, this is still very weak. Okay, so the, 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 I'm gonna erase this. Okay, 
So the signal you receive, remember this is IMAX. So the, the, the signal you receive from the station is still going to be like a current like this, right? The current is still oscillating, but the maximum and the, the minimum value are going to be like this. Part 2.2 and the next 2.2. Right? So, but that's enough. You can hear that station, even if a 0.2 uh, amp, okay? So that's a signal you receive from the station, okay? If you think this is very weak, now let, I, I want you to do this. Let's calculate the noise from a nearby station, okay? How do I do that? I'm going to tell you how to do that. A nearby station is at, what is the C? For? Oh, we need the C. I'm going to write the C here. So the C we found is going to be 4.22. So I've already tuned my circuit, uh, my, my radio to this frequency, angular frequency. So I'm listening to the, mu uh, the radio, okay, some music. I'm gonna, I I'm dancing, okay. Now I want you to calculate the uh, noise from a nearby station. Okay, I'm still tuned into this station, 1000K. Say there's another station at 1050K. Okay, so nearby, but it's also sending out signals. You will also receive signal from that station. You actually receive signal from all the stations uh, broadcasting. Okay, so let's see how this circuit is going to suppress the signal from this uh, station only 50k away from the station you want to listen to. So how do I calculate that? Well, I'm just going to calculate the IMAX from that station and compare that with this 0.02 amp I'm listening to. Okay, so how do I find the IMAX at that station? I'm going to still do the algebra, right? Because now I'm going to, let's erase all this. So what I, what I want to do is this. I want to find the IMAX from this frequency equals 1050K hertz. From this station, how do I find IMAX from that station? IMAX has a definition. I'm just going to still do this. Okay, so everything is gonna from this station. I'm gonna use all the numbers from that station, not the 1,000, right? I already did the 1,000. Uh, Vmax, what is Vmax from this station? Oh, still five millivolts, so they have the same uh, strength. The signal has the same strength. So this is gonna be still 0 0.05, no, 0 0.05, no, five times uh, 10 to negative three volts. Okay, so you see that they have the same signal. We're gonna see the, uh, the, 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 they have the same strength, the, the, the source. We're gonna see the, the current we receive is gonna be the same or not. So I want, now I need the Z at this frequency. What is the Z at 1050 hertz? I have already tuned my circuit to resonance at that station, right? So that's why the Z from that station is just gonna be equal to this. But now I want to calculate the Z from the other station, okay? I'm gonna still do this, right? The definition never changes. Okay, R doesn't change, because R doesn't depend on the source. But now the XL, from the, according, uh, from that station, how do you calculate that XL? You're gonna recalculate the XL, right? Now they're not gonna cancel, because they are not, the circuit now is at resonance at 1000K, not 1050K. So you're gonna calculate this uh, XL and XC. XC, let's do that. <clears throat> What's the definition of XL? Omega times L. I'm calculating everything at 10, uh, five zero hertz, I'm calculating everything here. So that means I'm gonna do this, two pi, times 1050,000K hertz, now multiply by this L, right? So this is the equivalent XL uh, to that station. So this number I got, okay, put all the numbers in, L is still the same, you're not changing L, but the XL depends on the uh, source. This number is, 
396 ohm. Okay? So that's the XL uh, related to that station. Now calculate XC related to that station. Well, you can do the same thing, right? That's the frequency you plug in. You plug in the C we just found. Because I'm still tuned, my circuit is still tuned to 1000K. So this is the C value for my station, or for my radio at the moment, right? I'm not changing anything. I still have this at C at this value. I just want to find the noise from another station. So C is still going to be this, right? So it's going to be still omega times 4 point, no. 2 pi times this. Okay. And then times the C, we just found 4.22. Okay. So what is XC uh, related to that station? This number I found is 359 ohms. Now I'm ready. Plug it in. Remember what we're doing. We want to find IMAX received from that station. Put them in. You're going to find the Z. It's going to be 37 ohms. Okay. If the Z is 37 ohms, what is IMAX? Well, you just use this, right? Because the VMAX is the same. They have the same strength. And Z is this value we just calculated. So the IMAX from that station. 1.35 times 10 to negative 4 amp. That is a zero, that's the, that's the noise you received from that station, okay? You, this is weak, you would say, well, 0 0.2, 0 0.02 amp. That noise is more than 100 times smaller than this, right? So you're listening to your station, you still get that noise, but that's too weak. Like, it's something like this. Okay, because it's 100, no, even smaller than that. This is not to scale. So that's the noise you get. And I can actually you get a lot of noise from other stations. It doesn't matter because the signal is too weak from that, those stations. I'm already tuned my uh, radio to that 1000 kHz. I'm going to receive a very strong signal from this station I'm listening to because I'm using RLC circuit to field of that. Okay, and then the Z, uh, the, the Noise from other station, well, it's going to be too weak, like more than 100 times weaker than this uh, station I'm listening to. Okay? So that's why this RLC circuit, they're very useful in real life. We use them as a filter circuit. Okay?